Welcome to the Carroll College Dining Hall, aka The Rot. The Rot here at Carroll, just like hundreds of other college dining halls around the country, serves over a thousand kids each day. But unlike those hundreds of other dining halls, Carol's Dining Hall has a strong sense of community. In the following video, we are going to take a closer look at the source for this strong community feel and look at the positive effects it has on the college dining experience here at Carroll College. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Alyssa. I'm Quincy. And I'm Chris. Join us as we take a closer look into the community of The Rock. In order to support a strong community, a dining hall must have three things. Good food, friendly employees, and a warm environment. We are all aware that college dining halls aren't known for their five-star food. But here at The Raw, we have a variety of tasty entrees. So we decided to go around and ask some students what their favorite meal here at The Raw is. I like the turkey, mashed potato, dish. I like the noodles with cheese sauce. And anyways, it reminds me of mac and cheese. Probably the chicken wraps that they have at lunch. Those are pretty good. The KFC bowl. <laughs> have to say... You want to save them? The rice. Can I kill her? Because rice is delicious. My favorite entree is the chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't know, I really like the sweet potato. It's pretty good. Chicken fried steak, hands down. The pecan pie that I just graciously picked up. Turkey tetrazzini. Mm. So good. My favorite entree is probably the chicken strips with the, the um, spaghetti like thing. I don't know, it was really good though. I'm gonna have to say the chowder bowls with the bread. It's pretty good. It's okay. I really enjoy the Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> um, I like the French dips. Definitely the best. Sodexo employs 35 employees, and like all dining halls, some stand out above the rest. We're gonna go find out who the favorites are. Who's your favorite person that works here? Carl, by far. He's a man. Who is your favorite person that works at the Rot? Oh, for sure. I really like Barb and she works at the little cafe. Oh, dude. Carl, of course. That guy right over there. I have to say, I have to say Carl. Oh, I really like Joanne. Carl. Uh, Tim is really, he's really good at what he does. The dude that makes some really good omelets. Hello, Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl all the way. Carl and Johanna. If you ever get a chance to talk to Carl or Ted, Jeremy, Jeremy, the big guy. They're all they're pretty cool chefs. Pat and Esther and their sandwiches. Carl. Carl, the omelet guy. Well, I have to say they're all very friendly because every time I walk in I get asked how my day is and how I'm doing. I like them all because it wouldn't be the rot without all of them. Alright, I'm on my way to go interview Carl and see what he contributes to the rot and how he can make it a lot happier, friendlier place. Hey Carl, what do you try to contribute to the rot every day that you come to work? Well, pretty well, you know, my personality is trying to, you know, serve the customers the best way I can, give them a fair deal. You know, if they ask for a little extra, I try to give them a little extra. Are you aware that people enjoy your positive attitude when you're serving them? And that it actually makes it fun for the students when they get their food? You know, I, I've been to this, it makes it a lot of fun, you know, and I try to make fun. It's just, what do you want, you know? I saw people come up here and they're like, what kind of bread, what do you want, you know, just go through motions. And people are like, oh yeah, whatever. But if you're approaching with like, hey, what you like, you know, would you like this, you know, and, and making fun for the people, mm -hmm. they're going to respond, they're going to come on back. You know, I believe that if you're going to make something, you're putting your name on it. 
you know, you're not just representing Cisco or Carol College. You're actually doing something that's putting your name on you know, the sandwich is a hey, that sandwich is probably made or you know, that sandwich that's made that was fantastic. I'm going back later, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the more repeat that we have, the better for the even though Carl is very popular here, he is far from the only person that contributes to the rock. I'm on my way to ask Jeremy some questions. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. What exactly is your job here at the rock? I am in the culinary position, that is with the. Uh, pizzas and then I start about 10 30 in the morning ends about seven o'clock at night for the kids but uh end up doing salad bar at the dinner time. How is working here at the Rock? Are there ever any problems that arise, things that might come up that you have to deal with? Um you got your daily commotions and uh some has been but nothing that's outrageous. Everybody's good to talk to and uh, friendly, I mean, you got different departments as a people way in the back to the editorial, but you can see it all. And somehow, one way or another, you do get to have a conversation with them. Fire! Saute cook. Uh, out of all the things that you make here, which one's your favorite and why? Favorite thing to make? I'm gonna have to say bacon cheeseburger. Uh, up here, usually, you're up on the grill and there's a lot of fire coming up normally. Right. Is there, uh, are you ever worried that you might catch something on fire? Uh, I'm not worried, but you know it's fun, you know, to make fireballs. It's like, whoa! <laughs> you think it makes you seem uh, like more dramatic or more... Uh, yeah, it's more of a show, you know. What do you try and bring to the uh, rock community every day when you come in uh, to work? You know, just keep on doing the same old thing, you know, bring a positive attitude, have a good day, you know. Just not really let... try not try and let... try and let something not bother you. Uh -huh. All right, that's it, thank you. Now I'm on my way over to ask Joanna some questions. You know, Joanna, it's remarkable how you remember everyone's name. Is there a certain trick that you use? And how important do you think it is to be able to remember students' names? I find a certain characteristic of that person that something clicks like that for me. Mm -hmm. And I think people should be recognized by their first name. You know, I just feel that's part of saying you're special. And what are your daily duties here? I check cards, talk with the students, which I thoroughly enjoy, and wipe tables and keep stuff clean. What do you think of all the special events that Sodexo puts on during the holidays? Well, it just um, opens it up to the public to come and enjoy it with the students here. And I think we should have special holidays to just say, you know, this is what it's all about. One of the things that Johanna talked about were the benefits of having special activities or feasts around the holiday season. So we went around and asked some of the students what they thought about that. I think it's really important. I like it. I enjoy it. It's something fun to do with your friends before you go up back home. Everybody comes here. Even none of the kids you ever see at lunch or dinner are here. Just good food. Thanksgiving at the Rock makes us all feel like we're part of one big family. And it's like eating Thanksgiving at my house all over again. I think it's very important because it adds to the sense of community that we have here at Carroll. And especially it gets some of the staff involved with the students, so there's not so much a separation there. I think it adds a lot, considering some people, especially the older classmen, don't really go to the Rot unless it's something special like this. So I guess it allows the whole school to be a part of the Rot. I 
think, especially this Thanksgiving feast that we're having, really just brings us together as a whole, kind of like the pilgrims. And um, it just makes me feel really close to all my classmates, even if we're not in the same grade level. It's fun, you know, having a change of pace, so I think it's important. Well, I feel like I'm at home right now, which is pretty cool, because my mom makes some of the same food, so I don't know, it just brings us all together in a very exciting and happy environment for all of us to love each other. Especially now that we're juniors, and some of us live in Trinity, and others live off campus, so I don't know. I guess I really enjoyed it tonight because we don't get to see each other and eat together very often, so. They decorated it really cute, and it's just kind of a more like family feel than just a cafeteria. You're not really going to walk into another dining hall quite like this one. As a part of the rock community, we should all help out by clearing off our plates, putting the silverware in the designated silverware bin, placing your beverage glasses and plates on the blue conveyor belt, and finally, say thank you to the kind people in the back. I hope you've enjoyed the, our documentary on the community of the rock. Now here's some extra things for you to think about. Because he sings to me sometimes and I like it. Ham, bacon, olive, onion. Ham, bacon, olive, onion. Whenever I get a sandwich from him at lunch, he always like sings for every ingredient that I ask for. It's awesome. Well, I, for omelets, I always get a um, ham, bacon, and cheese, and uh, I call it a uh, what do I call it? Piglet. Yeah. And then when I order it, he says Miss Piggy. It's quite hilarious. I asked Carl to put some potatoes in my omelet. It's a kind of a random request, and uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, no problem." So just that's a good example because they'll do things like that as long as you know it's clean and uh, there's no like environmental problem or something like that as long as you know it's clean and uh, there's no like environmental problem or something like that they, they'll go out of their way to meet our requests we watched the movie for Vendetta and they make a meal in it called Egg in a Basque, which is an egg cooked on a piece of toast. And I was going to get my regular omelet, but then I asked him, if I brought you a piece of toast, would you make me an egg in a basket? And uh, he was like, oh yeah, sure. And I like that he always is willing to make whatever you want. And I, I eat my meals here. Gail and the staff have given me a, a pretty good deal, so I make that pretty easy. And so I like to come here because, one, the food is it's good. And anyone who complains about the food here needs to go travel to a third world country. And I guarantee you, they will be thankful for what they're offered here because we have so many options. And it's good food. It's also great, though, for me because I live on campus and part of where, why I'm here is to share life with people. And people share life around the table, and they share life when they share food together. And that's what this place is really all about, too. So, uh, yeah, I come over here and grab a bite, and it's quick, it's convenient, but it's also much more than that. It's a great place to just catch up with people, check in, share life, and uh, share laughs, and that's, that's a good place. Food is, it's about more than just food. Food is about more than just food. And especially in a Christian and Catholic mindset, there's always a profound um, appreciation for table fellowship. So if you look through the Gospels, Jesus is constantly eating with people and sitting down and sharing life that way with people, sometimes people you wouldn't expect. And something very similar happens here. 
people sit down and they share and table fellowship and that's how relationships are formed. And there's so many so many times of laughter, but there's also deep conversations that take place, questions, great ways of relating that then lead to other things. And so this is there's a lot going on in this in this room that is more important than just people getting food. It's about sharing life together. That's always been a huge aspect of Christianity. And what, uh, what Jesus was about. So for me, it's always about more than just eating. It's about encountering, sharing, relating to people. I'm over here in Guad now, and uh, we've heard rumors about some students that have enjoyed Carl's omelets so much, uh, they actually made a rap on the computer about him. So, uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about that. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? We're uh, working on an alpha project about the uh, community of the rot, and we heard a uh, rumor that you and some people have made a rap about Carl. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we have, we have. Um, you guys want to come in? Sure. All right. So, uh, what was the inspiration behind uh, making a rap for Carl? What was the, uh, obviously you guys think Carl's a great guy, but what was the events leading up to deciding to make a rap about Carl? Well, you know, I think obviously to answer the first question, Carl himself is the inspiration of the rap. Um, but basically when we talked about it, we just knew we had to do something for him. Um, you know, someone of his capacity and what he does for our campus shouldn't go unmentioned. Um, if I had all the tools, I would, I'd build a, a bronze statue of him and place it outside the rock. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have neither the manpower or the economic strength to allow that. All I have is a MacBook and GarageBand. So, you know, I did what the good Lord gave me. Nice. Do you have a, a clip of it that you could play? Oh uh, yeah. Um, actually, I, I usually keep it uh, kind of up here ready in case anyone wants to listen to it. Um, so here, I'll, I'll just give you a little clip at the beginning. Um, you know, that's it's probably as much as I kind of want to show you guys right now. Uh, uh, maybe a little clip, and then when we come out with the actual single, um, we'll be able to show you know the campus a little bit more. It's just a matter of I want this to be perfect for Carl. Um, you know, you don't. The Chicago Bulls didn't unveil the Jumpman Jordan statue until it was completely finished. So I mean, you understand, right? Uh, that makes perfect sense. Do you have a timeline for us on when this wrap uh, should be finished? Um, you know. I don't know if there's a timeline for perfection, uh, so uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, I like to say I'd finish it before uh, my five years here are done, um, but who knows? Who knows? All right. Thank you.